Welcome to Homemakers No Dig Garden. It's the middle of April, but it feels like March today. It's quite windy and probably going to rain while we're filming. Let's see what happens. And you're going to see amazing No Dig Garden, even though the weather has not been brilliant. There's a lot going on here. And we are publishing a lot of information to go with these videos, like there's knowledge packs that we're now selling in the shop all about different aspects of no dig, making compost spacings, companion planting, that kind of thing. And then there's also my books. I've just released a children's book as well, cookbook. So do have a look at those options. What I want to show you today is the details of some of the things we're up to. Like we've done a lot of planting already and nearly all of it is under covers because of the weather to keep the wind off, in particular the wind. It's not, this is called frost fleece, but it's a bit of a misnomer because actually if the leaves are touching it, like they are there, that's spinach under there, uh, they will catch the frost a bit. But it, it, the plants don't die uh, it, and it enables them to continue growing more quickly, especially in weather like this. But if you look at these lettuce here, and they've not grown a lot actually. They've been in the ground for three weeks and they've grown a lot less than normal, but they're looking strong. And that's the main thing I want to, you know, if the weather hasn't been brilliant, Maybe your plants are not growing a lot. Don't worry as long as they're still there. And, you know, as soon as it warms up, which actually is going to do here, we're forecasting some warm weather next week. They'll grow like a rocket. I just mentioned too, this is a way of securing a cover. If you've got enough wire hoops, we put a wire on the outside like that. This is something I explain in my uh, knowledge pack about winter gardening. Those kinds of tips can really save you a lot of time and effort. Here we have potatoes we've actually planted potatoes this morning and I put them out I'm not going to plant these because they're already in the ground but this is just to show you the spacing so there's eight potatoes about 18 inches apart you can go 18 inches two feet 45 60 centimeters the beds two meters long two rows along don't cram them in too much this is a trial area where it's now the ninth year in a row of growing potatoes in this same soil it's still working I'll just put this here to remind me that's um when we were planting this morning it's a, called a volunteer if you don't manage to harvest all your potatoes in the summer they will regrow <laughs> that's what was going on there so that, that's going on the compost heap. it's totally fine to compost this is the seed potatoes and i've been putting them to chit that's called a chit or it's basically a sprout uh, in daylight you do that you get um, rather than leaving them in a sack where it will get long or like that you can't really plant that so well and then um, these are home safe seed you can do that as well so you can plant your own potatoes from last year little ones if they're sprouting great if they're not sprouting you can still plant them uh, here we have some overwintered broad beans which had a mesh cover on the same one that's on the lettuce actually and they're looking okay it's interesting they they got frost damaged and that's where you can see that black in the stem and you can also see how there's more than one stem coming from one seed if you look at this one in particular, you know, that's one seed of broad bean and how it's made all these different stems. They're brilliant plants for that. I'm also noticing quite a few weed seeds here. And that's actually probably different wildflower where we let, I let some wildflowers go to seed near the um, pile of old cow manure that is compost on that bed. Here we have some multi-sown leeks that have been struggling to grow because of the cold weather but they're now uh, starting to go to seed actually and I'll just show you how they look when we come out the ground so that's that's a leek which is starting to rise up to flower that's a flower stem that'll make a beautiful flower actually uh, but all of that is edible at this point that's tender it's a bit like a garlic scape you know they're very closely related and what I normally do is just cut off the bottom you see there's a very nice leak there so that that's a multi-sown leak you you get more medium-sized leaks rather than a fewer giant ones and they're not planted deep as you can see so you haven't got a long white shank but enough you've got plenty of stem tasty food there this is the asparagus bed so just for a trial we, we did this too late though put these spinach and spring onion plants in just to see really and yeah, they've grown, but they would have been better if I got them in sooner. And here's the first asparagus just appearing. So it's about right time. With the warm weather we're forecast for next week, it's quite likely that we'll, we'll be picking asparagus within about a week, I would hope. And that 
Wow, that's a taste of spring. These are taste almost of late winter. The sorrel, we've been picking quite a bit um, for salad bags, many actually slightly smaller leaves. That's broadleaf sorrel. And here we have the, the queen of sorrel, the buckler leaved. This one's amazing. Uh, it, it does have this slight speckled look to the leaves. That's, that's not a disease or anything, that's just how they are. Uh, but they're very fiddly to pick. I had a funny conversation with the head vegetable gardener at Le Manoir, Raymond Blanc's garden and restaurant in Oxfordshire, and he said that <laughs> he had to pick something like a thousand of these leaves a day for their restaurant. And he didn't sound too happy about it. I wouldn't like that job, it is very fiddly. They're going no dig, by the way, at Le Manoir. It's really good. This is raspberries, where we've got a metal border. And that's a six inch piece of metal which stops the roots spreading out too far, uh, or at all, hopefully. And in fact, a few escape, but raspberries are very shallow rooting. If you don't do it, you, they will take over your plot. So raspberries are really worth um, edging in some way. That's why I've got them up this end of the garden, so grass on this side. Here is the wormery. I keep it covered uh, to keep the warmth in and the worst of the rain out and you can see there's loads of worms. We are, oh my word, yeah, fantastic. So we're putting uh, decaying vegetable matter on top about every week, put another inch or two, three or four centimeters and water it. I always water it to keep them really moist. In January, we uh, Took, took the worms off, there they were, put them here with a bit of food. So that made the new wormery. And that revealed underneath the living worms, there were all the worm casts of the whole year. And there was about three wheelbarrowfuls of beautiful compost, which I'm using now for in, in the potting mix. It's working really well. And I just mentioned the, the mint bed. <laughs> Talking about raspberries escaping, this is another one that does that. So this is apple mint. It's a lovely flavoured mint. And that was just one plant put there two years ago. And it's just, a, I've got space here, so I can do that. And using the cardboard method, you know, it was just cardboard on, on this. You know, look at this dandelions, buttercups, just everything, grasses. There was even some cooch grass here. Brambles we dug out, that's worth doing. And then, a bit of compost on top, it was pretty rough compost. Uh, this fleece, by the way, is just because it's been so cold and it was just to encourage the mint to grow a bit. New project. This is for, wow, for children actually. <laughs> Originally, that was what triggered me to do it. Um, a new children's book could be happening. But we're just making a pond and this time it's going to be different to the other one, it's going to have a liner. I just ordered the liner this morning and it'll have sand under the liner, even an underliner under the liner. Just want to make sure that liner endures, it's a butyl liner. And Adam's been doing a great job of digging out the pond. As you can see you can get an idea of the homemaker's soil profile. It's a nice dark silty loam over something that is more like clay, it's not pure clay though. And that's the water table at the moment. Because we've been having quite a bit of rain, you can see the water level's actually not far below the surface level. And that's about the same level as the water in the, the main pond, which is still <laughs> not holding water brilliantly. This is wood chip, which has been here for six or seven months. And you can see how it's decomposing nicely had some conifer in, that's all good. I don't mind at all having a bit of conifer in the wood pile. It's very difficult to change soil pH. So that we'll use either, we can run the lawnmower over, the, over it to chop it up smaller, put it in the compost heap as a brown, or put it on pathways this autumn. Because the only fertility added here is compost on beds, wood chip on paths, 
and one other little one actually is mustard so that this was mustard as a cover crop green manure sown last October at the same time as the garlic went in the ground and that's the remains of the mustard and there's a weed I mean that this is the weeding I do it's just removing the odd small weed that I see it's a it was a nettle <laughs> and you can see the garlic's looking fantastic I'm really pleased with this this had the dressing of annual dressing of compost last October just before planting the garlic and sowing the mustard and then I've done an interplant here of coriander I popped these plants in on Saturday so three days ago and they came straight out of the greenhouse no hardening off check out my short on that uh, you know we're putting a lot of information out in, in these videos and a lot of it's about saving time uh, we made a short about this compost tea batch as well this is the <clears throat> end of the compost got a really good knowledge pack about making compost too and all the things you can do to save time like you, you don't have to separate out your perennial weeds there's a dock <laughs> Adam did a lot of dock digging out around the pond yesterday where the wildflowers are and so that's that, that's a kind of brown and green uh, there's bits of cardboard so we're mixing green and brown there'll be some wood chip going on next uh, this is all grass mowings from the, the current batch you can probably hear the mower in the background and the temperature well it's not huge this has been a classic winter heap you know in winter you don't have enough green material to really get your heap hot uh, when we make the new compost in that empty bay there it will speed up uh, with more rapid additions and here you can see the result and look how imperfect it is <laughs> it's not perfect compost and that you know I'm showing you this deliberately to encourage you because I've had people come here and, and you know they I can see their vision is that they're going to make something like you buy in a sack of compost all perfect and sieved and everything we, we put it on just like that not sieved that makes a, a bit of wood on top fish out the plastic there's always some of that and then um, that slowly gets eaten by the soil life through the course of, of a year and that helps to mobilize all the food which is in the soil and moisture and then plants love you can sow and plant straight into compost look at these carrots here there's carrots are sown alternating rows with radish and they haven't had fleece on they've had the mesh cover it's not as hot as fleece these were sown two weeks ago which is about right actually at this time of year for a new sowing of carrots they, they they're difficult seeds to get going carrots because it's a tiny seed new growth is hesitant one chomp of a slug and it's gone so don't be dismayed if your carrots are not a success immediately <laughs> this is dig no dig bed so i'm comparing dig and no dig um in view of the weather i'm going to leave the fleece on them and uh, we'll have a look at them in the next tour and i'm going to let nicola pass through with the camera yeah wow what a different environment in here I'm sorry if I'm shouting a bit I, I find it subconsciously difficult when it's very windy I hope the sound is, is okay on the video and um, suddenly it feels so calm in here <laughs> the temperature I'm reading up there is, is 20 degrees and outside it's about eight so that gives you an idea of the effect of a greenhouse at maintaining warmth and enabling this amazing growth you know and keeping the wind off plants then we've got um, got some flowers there actually I do quite a bit of that for interplanting and then this is celeriac that was sown uh, around about oh, nearly a month ago now pricked out about a week ago when it was tiny before the first true leaf you can prick out when you are not seeing a true leaf you just see the two you know that's the sort of stage you can prick out at that we do anyway it works really well uh, same as these celery so about five weeks ago they were pricked out and they're now at that stage there and they're in the module trays I designed, which I'm finding work really well for, you know, I mean, look at this. This is lettuce, for example, that probably we're not going to need. We've got spare plants, and that's why it's got so big. Normally, I reckon to get the plants in when they're smaller than that, and they, they work, they, they take more quickly. Same with these broccoli. Um, most of them are in the ground. And over here, we have the hotbed. So this is something that only works if you've got a lot of space. Obviously, you need a big volume to get the heat. Uh, again, you can see a video about this. I've just mentioned the temperature at the moment is 
Impressive, 61 degrees centigrade. <laughs> that's about 135 Fahrenheit or something crazy. And that's just from the, the fresh manure. I, I topped it up with two wheelbarrow loads of fresh manure uh, on Saturday. And that warmth is enabling, you know, th this sort of thing, the peppers, aubergines in particular, and new sowing of basil there is just emerging. Um, tomatoes, until recently, they can probably come off the hotbed soon, actually, because they, they're motoring away. And there's an interesting one here, which is, I wonder how many of you know what that is. It's asparagus. You don't often see it from seeds. So that, that I sowed about five weeks ago, maybe 6th, 10th of March. Uh, what are we, day 16th, 17th April. So yeah, that's, that will then, like, like many plants, like the, a lot of the warm climbing plants anyway, tomatoes and will, will pot it on into little pots, just like these tomatoes have been here. So that's a tomato that was in a module uh, that was potted on last week. I don't know if we'll see any roots there. Oh yeah, look at that. So that's all new roots since Thursday. That was Kerry, who was a volunteer from Atlanta in Georgia, who did that. And he spent a quiet afternoon potting on all the tomatoes and hopefully label them in, in such a way that we can recognize them. I tend to economize on labels. And the compost, I will just mention, because we've got some amazing stuff here, um, homemade compost, and then we mix it with a bit of wood chip. Uh, yeah, these are already mixed actually. That one's got a bit more wood chip, so that's been sieved to four millimeters. It's really uh, fine, as you can see. Um, I'm buying one as well, that's called Pete's Peat Free. What I do is actually, I mix some of the bought compost with some of the homemade and a bit of the worm compost, and boy, does that make a good mix. As you can see, these plants are really growing well. Okay, we'll venture outside again. I think we're just gonna make it. I was afraid that this video might not finish in one go because of the weather, but it's on our side. So tulips, look at this. Isn't it such a nice sign of spring? Those are five years old. Um, you can also get great color with some vegetables like that is orash which is related to spinach and fat hen and i pick a few leaves of that to put in the salad bags this bed i took the fleece off yesterday because i was worried about the wind and these peas if they got a fleece flapping up too much on top of up and down on them that can damage the the tips uh, but they're looking all right they've been in the ground about two weeks whereas here I'm keeping the fleece on the brassicas that's cabbage and cauliflower and broccoli they're just a bit more hardy and I'm worried about pigeons because a fleece cover as well as providing warmth is fantastic for keeping off birds rabbits if you've got them it just does everything in one go uh, I took the fleece off those onions as well yesterday. They were looking a bit squashed there. Not brilliant. It's not been a, a great year for growth so far. The new plantings are, are, you know, they're behind where I'd normally like them to be, like that's lettuce. But you can see how that they're, they're very happy with the fleece right on top of them. Uh, I wouldn't mind if it was on hoops, but the in wind like this, where, where you've got the covers on hoops, they're more inclined to blow away, so it's, it's like one less thing to worry about. <coughs> this is a brassica bed, just a very few new brassica seedlings. That I don't do too much of that at this time of year because they're gonna flower soon. Uh, these spring cabbage are gonna flower soon as well, actually, so we're harvesting them. And then spinach, probably got another month of picking. So all of those went in in September. This is a new no-dig bed. So it's an opportunity to show you. Do you see what's going on here? That's dandelions. And these dandelions are coming up from a root which is deep in the ground. You, you never get the parent root, as I call it, out. But you can, usually you hear a scrunch and then you know that you're getting out the top growth. Oh, there's a wonderful centipede. I love it when we see the wildlife like that. 
See, this is now the soil blue. I wouldn't normally dig quite as much as this actually, but it's good to show you. There's the pasture that is underneath this new bed and there's the remains of the cardboard. The cardboard's now decomposed. So cardboard only lasts, lasts a certain length of time. So it's like a temporary weed barrier. There's the dandelion root that was or is promoting that regrowth and there's still a bit of dandelion there. So what, what you need to do, depends what your perennial weeds are. Perennial weeds are ones that keep growing from the root in the soil. Just keep removing them until this root gives up. It runs out of energy eventually. Even weeds like bindweed. Th this area was really full of bindweed two years ago. And this spring, touch wood, really I'm blown away. You know, we, we've hardly had to touch these beds at all. This time last year it was growing quite a lot, the, the bindweed. Ah, oh, look at these. They, I'm very sad about the ones we lost in the winter, but the ones that have survived are just amazing. That's claret. It's an F1 hybrid broccoli. Um, I don't grow too many F1s, but this one I feel is worthwhile because the quality difference is quite remarkable compared to the open pollinated. And they're in the ground a long time, so if they don't do much, you've done a lot of work, time and effort for not much result. But what we're getting here is worthwhile because we, we get this big initial pick and then they keep shooting for about a month at a time of year when there's not a lot of other produce. This is coming into the hungry gap now. We're still okay, we're still good, we've got winter roots, but in about a month's time actually it's quite lean. Um, oh yeah, look at the rye. This just has grown so fast and this is why some people do grow it as a cover crop or green manure, but this is, for me, this is grain. So we're going to harvest, all being well, never take anything for granted. This is going to be a grain harvest in early August for making bread. And again, there's a video about that, what we did last year, it's quite funny. And what should we do now? We'll head down and finish off in the bottom, in this polytunnel. This is just in passing, I mentioned that homemade compost, what I was saying about the bits of wood in it. And you can see how it leaves the surface slightly woody which actually when, if it's being pounded on by rain for example you know that's that's good it's it's a bit of a cover but not too much you, you don't want thick in my experience thick wood chip doesn't work it's not good for plants when until it's nicely decomposed these are incredible plants because they were sown in the middle of september last year so that's like eight months ago. Is that right? April, May, June, July, it was no, seven months. <laughs> but they're in their sixth month of cropping because they're pretty quick. Fifth month, sorry. Um, we've been picking in here since late November and we take off the outer leaves. So like with lettuce like that, that's the harvest. And then some of them, the lettuce will go on cropping for quite a while if we want it to, but some of them are starting to rise to flower. So like the salad rocket there, for example and it won't hang around for long. We'll, we'll probably two more weeks of harvest of, of something worthwhile. And the, this is a gorgeous one called Red Lace Mustard, which has been giving really big harvest actually, but now once they start doing this and rising to flower, they're not going to produce so many more leaves. So again, probably two more weeks and then it's not worth picking anymore. All being well, by then we'll be on the outdoor lettuce. So so that keeps my salad bags going, which is the, the main thing we sell here. And then what we do at that point is twist out. So with no dig gear, uh, it, it's easier not to, well, better for the soil not to pull because that disturbs the soil less. You, sometimes you can use a trowel actually and just cut under a plant as well. That's another way. But a rotation is effective. It leaves most of the roots in the ground. And then, so this will all be cleared except for the garlic. We spread compost around around that much, a bit more than an inch, and that's enough. This has had no compost or anything for nearly a year now. Last May it had some. And so you can see the remains of little bits of wood on the surface, but we're sort of getting back to soil almost. It's kind of ready for the next dose. And that will be enough to give fertility for the tomatoes, cucumbers, melons, which I'll look forward to showing you next time we're here, all being well. It might not all be plant stuff actually, but quite a bit will be, particularly tomatoes. Like, just looking ahead very briefly, uh, tomatoes you've seen growing. You didn't see though in the greenhouse any cucumbers. I haven't sown them yet, 
I haven't sewn courgettes yet. <coughs> there is no rush. Uh, don't worry for cucurbits, you know, they, they need it warm. So usually mid-April is a good time to sow cucurbits, cucumber squash and all of those. Uh, and then we'll plant them in, in about a month's time. Actually, it's quite sobering to think of that because we're suddenly coming now from winter into spring. And I hope you've enjoyed having a look at the, kind of, it feels like the end of winter still. Uh, not the beginning of summer yet, but the, certainly the beginning of some spring warmth. And you'll see the result of that next time I show you around.